guys, I have here something special. A 1997 S500 Coupe. You don't see this too often. Now, this is not mine, of course. This is uh, someone who's bringing me their car to take a look at. There's something going on with the EVAP system, I believe. Has the check engine light. Has the um, gas light coming on. This is a beautiful car. You know, I got to record this, man. What's going on? <laughs> it seems that way, don't it? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, this thing is gorgeous, man. How you feeling, brother? Uh, pretty good. How you doing? All right, all right, all right. Man, I love a beautiful Mercedes. This is a classic. Golly. I haven't seen one of these in forever. Man, where did you get this from, man? Uh, Florida. Uh, little uh, classic car dealership down there. Okay. Yeah, you don't see this around this way. God, you're not in this condition. My time. Yeah, the is great. I'm just hoping, you know, the, you know, the engine and all that, you know, keeps up with it. Because, like I said, that check engine light just popped up. So I hope he ain't trying to hide stuff. Nah, because it's nothing. Um, It hasn't affected the performance. No, it drives fine. No rough idle. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, it's probably something um much more simpler than you expect. Because for this car to be in this kind of condition externally, yeah. man, you know he took care of the, uh, the guts. Yeah, I think some old white lady had it. Yeah. From Pondo Beach, you brother. know, they, they got money there. So God, this thing is gorgeous, dude. All the, you know, electronics work, though. You know, the, uh, the clock still works, you know. God, dude. I had to record this because I don't see these too often. And by the time I see them in Cincinnati, man, they raggedy. <laughs> <laughs> Golly. Woo wee. You got you one here. You got a good deal on it? Uh, 10. Yeah, you got a good deal. In this condition, you got a great deal. Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I really wasn't trying to get nothing this year. I was trying to get something next year, but I seen it and I'm like, you know what? <laughs> You're going to be one of BBS boys here in a second. <laughs> Is this stuff you're working on? Okay, all right. So this is this is mine. That's mine. Okay, um, on one on the right. Remember mine. that one. This is mine. Um, this is mine. Just pick that one up. Then the SUVs are, are mine also. So the only ones that are customers are those two up there on the left. Um, those just came out of Indiana and South Carolina. I do the coilover swaps. I pull out the hydraulic fluid suspension. The ABC is what they call it, active body control. And I put in adjustable coilovers. So there's nobody, not a lot of people out here that's doing it like nationwide. So people send them to me to do it. So, okay, yeah, great. keeps the business going, man. It's pretty cool. So you, you do like a lot of buying and selling too? And I slow down a, a lot of the flips. I mean, I used to do that heavy, like, you know, Corey, right? Sounds familiar. Well, he was the cat that had the white Bentley. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So we, um, we both was like flipping cars, anything, Hondas, whatever, Toyotas, whatever, for years. He still do that, but I was focused on Mercedes because I love them yeah. and I understand them and I like working on them. So I just got out of that game. Um, every now and then, like this one, you know, I hit a lick on this one. I'm going to wind up selling it because I don't, I don't need it. I got another old school, um, a 500 SEC, a 1985 that's in storage that I need to be working on. Is that the two or four? Two, it's a two one, right before this body style. Okay. You know, this is basically S Class Coupe. Yeah. Right before that was the SEC. Mm -hmm. And after that was the CL. Uh, after this body style was that body style. So yeah. um, I need to be probably, I, I know for a fact, I need to work on the SEC because, like, I love the old S Coupes. Mm -hmm. But because I already got the wild body one, I ain't tripping on that. Mm -hmm. Like, some people would kill to have that 600 oh, yeah. um, twin turbo V12. I'm just kind of like, ah, it's cool. I, it's beautiful. But I'll probably make my money off of it and mm. focus on what I got. Like, I got too much crap anyway, so <laughs> I need to focus. <laughs> I need to focus. I wanted one of these joints, man, but I test drove one a long time ago, man. It was such a bad, it was in bad shape, man. I so, went and looked at one in Indianapolis. God, he dude. six for it. Yeah. Horrible. Indianapolis. Indianapolis. Was it the 12, the V12, or was it the V8? It was the 8. Okay. Dude, like, the sunroof was screwed in the headliner coming down seats tore up it needed a paint job need a paint job was, was like, something going on with the engine too or was it was it driving it was, it was driving it was all right okay that's a different one then but, i mean you know just compared to that oh my like, goodness night and day right exactly you get what you pay for mm -hmm. i think there was a cat that was one like 50 something hundred for one 
um, about two years ago. I drove out. It was like, I think it was past like Mason somewhere. Man, that thing was so garbage, bro. I was like, God, yeah, man. 15, 15, 15. <laughs> yeah. This thing is gorgeous. I haven't seen a good condition one in so long. So now I'm thinking I might need to be place the back shocks. Ah, because it's a little low. Yeah, what do they have in here? Just regular coil over sprays or spring coils, whatever, or do they have uh it's not, I don't think it's right. electronic. No air, no 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 air rod, no I think yeah just hydraulic, shocks. just a regular standard strut and coil. Okay. Yeah. Um that shouldn't be too bad then. Shoot, this thing is gorgeous. Yeah. So I'ma run the code on it. I got the scatter. <coughs> <coughs> Golly, <coughs> a little cold out here. It's supposed to. Huh. Warm up. It took me forever how to figure that one out. Let's see, does it come out? I've got that little thing right there in the emblem. In the emblem, yeah, right comes there. out. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um. So, what's the history like? Maintenance wise, what did yeah. she say? I mean, I don't know. I didn't. Did she? Get up. Any history on it? Like maintenance last time this has been checked, spark mm -hmm. plugs, anything like that. Um, so, okay. So what happened with the, um, the, the code? Is it a blinking no, I just light? Came on now, so. Okay. So it wasn't, the check is like, is it blinking? It's just staying on. Yeah, just staying on. All right, I'm I had Googled, you know, that and the, the gas light, and it said something about, what was it? Uh, I think it's something right in here. That they, I think it might be that thing. Like a, uh, let me see. You know what that is? The fuel Pur pressure. Yeah, it's a purge valve. Okay, well, it's, it's something it said something about fuel pressure so regulators. Yeah, so the purge valve, like the fumes from the gas tank goes through the charcoal canister. And then it goes through this and it basically recirculates the fumes back into the intake. Fuel efficiency, so you don't have the smell of gas coming out your exhaust and whatever like that. It basically utilizes the fumes, which are also combustible, I guess. So it's just fuel efficiency. So <clears throat> they say sometimes the purge valve will get stuck or get clogged up with just gunk. <clears throat> you can clean it out and that solves it. Um, sometimes you'll have a disconnection somewhere. That's what I was looking for initially. But the purge valve, they said oftentimes, you see, it could be that. It could be something as simple as the f the gas cap. Oh, well, I don't think there ain't no... Ah, <coughs> oh, God. I'm allergic to beauty. This car is beautiful. Okay, yeah, it's good. Yeah, so he said it could be related to the gas cap. One or the other. But I'm going to have to read the code first just to see... If it says like large vacuum leak or whatever, or evap leak or something like that, they say those are the two things to check. So that's why I was like, it might not be as bad as you think <clears throat> if it's not affecting like idle. Yeah, it, I mean, it still drives. Yeah. <clears throat> I had an SL come through that had a purge valve issue. And uh, he wound up just living with that crap because he was like, ah, it doesn't affect anything. No, nah, I ain't trying to, you know, but you, to keep it. But you want it. Yeah. yeah, I ain't trying to drive with the check engine. Like, yeah, because then something else happens. That's the downhill slope. It's already on, you know. Yeah, you won't even know if it's something new. Cause yeah. You be, yeah, you be like, that's just an e-valve and then engine blow up. <laughs> so let, me go get, let me go get the scanner. Let me just uh, see if we can diagnose that one. <clears throat> yeah, hold on. You like that coffee cup? <laughs> Go to my wrist, baby. All right, whatever. Using the eye car soft. Let's see what this is all Okay. All right, so hook the scanner up. It's just right here. Easy connection. Okay. Let's start the car, see what it's doing. <laughs> now, I don't know. This car will come up as an option if I go through the regular Mercedes menu. It's a 97, I believe. Let's see what I can do. I'm going to 
you look at that sideways. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna be an option. <clears throat> is it W140 maybe? I forgot what this is called. You know, I have to look at it as just a regular OBD2 scanner, regular hookup. Yeah, it's not gonna be there. So let me back out of the bins. Um, let's see. Just do it as that. Let's see what comes up. So you do see the check engine light right there. Coats. All right. Yep. Just one. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Yeah. So that's the code that you have. Is the EVAP uh, emission system leak, uh, large leak. Yeah. Evaporative emission system leak detected, large leak. So that's what's expected. The P0455, that's the common code that comes up on them when you have that type of leak. So, start off with something simple like the gas cap. Um, did you put gas in it since you since you had it? Yeah. Did it come up it after that? Yeah, did it come up after that? Yeah, for me, well, like I said, it I, wasn't, it I wasn't. got it, and all I did was drive it from the truck to my house. Yeah. And then, like, the next time I drove it, because it was at, like, a quarter of a tank. Okay. So, I put, like, I don't know, 30 in it or Next time I drove, that's when it came out. So it was after you put the gas in it? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let me see something. You got to do the simple stuff first because it didn't have that issue. When you first got it, it came up after you put gas in it. So start off with the most simple things. Because, you know, that's, I was, you know, thinking like, you know, I hope it, it wasn't already up there. And, you know, hopefully he didn't just clear it just to, yeah. just to sell the car. Right. Cause they say just replace the gas cap over time. I mean, this is just rubber. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't create a good seal, of course that could be an issue. Like if you drove around just like this with this mug off, it has to be, it's a closed, I guess not circuit, but system, Yeah. right? So any type of leak detection that's not intended cause that's, that's a pressurized system and it's supposed to go through the charcoal canister to filter it out, this and the other. So. It's no different of having a a hole in your tank. It's going to notarize that pressure. It's not what it should be. So you have all types of sensors that indicate that. So it's telling you that you have a system leak. Um, it doesn't indicate if it's serious or if it's small, but it says a large leak. So it's enough for it to cause a, the light to come on. So the most simple thing to start off with would be something like that. Just replace this uh, gas cap and see if that changes it. You can take it on, take it off a couple of times. You know, and just see. If she wasn't driving it that much, I mean, stuff becomes brittle, stiff over time. Oh, yeah. You know, it's just what it is. So they say that you can take that gas cap off like I just did, start it back up, see if it clears. See if it's a stored or like a basically like an active fault or if it just came up and needs to be cleared. It could be indicated that something is starting to leak or, or if there's a constant leak. For it to say a large leak, it's probably... It didn't happen until you did that. That could be it. Now, was the car running when you put gas in it, or did you turn the car off? I turned it off. Okay. Yeah, some people would leave them uh, running and introduce the issue that way. Purge valve would be the second thing. Like I said, you can replace it or clean it out with, um, what's that stuff called? Like, would it be like brake cleaner? Stuff that breaks up that gunk. Um, I think I've seen that. Uh, that, could, that could resolve that, or you can just replace it, but... Let's try the most simple thing first. Uh -oh. All right, still present, but let me see if it's active. It says current there.
Looking stiff. I don't think he likes this car. Come on, baby. Let's do it again. So it says current, large leak. <clears throat> okay so initially we refer to this as the purge valve i'll do my research but that's connected to the fuel rail so that's a hard connection i'm thinking this right here is what i was really referring to what i meant to refer to because this brings the air the fumes from the tank back into it you hear this pulsating and it recycles it back into the intake and it's all a part of that system. So I think that this is, cause this is easy to replace. I thought this is called the purge valve. I'll double check, I'll do some research, but you should hear that kicking on every now and then. Like, you're like what's that ticking noise is this? Um, <clears throat> I clear the code, drive it, see what it does, see if it comes back up. But we know what's related to the EVAP system. From that, fuel, uh, from the gas tank input, which is where the cap is at, the inlet, to the charcoal canister in the rear, to the um, purge valve and air intake. If you had, you would have let me see emissions. So yeah, once it gets to this point, it would be diagnosed as something else. If you had like a issue with the air intake, but well, we're talking about the the, the fuel or the um, the the vapors from the uh, from the gas tank in its travels up to here that is a, it's a leak somewhere in that system all right so i think we should focus on that i do some research but that code is a common code you don't have the, the misfire or anything like that so it's something simple it's, it's not going to be an expensive fix worst case scenario like i said charcoal canister in the back purge valve in the front or gas cap all right so put this back together then I just want to make sure I had some good video of this because I haven't seen one of these ever. This is cool, bro. This is cool, man. It's a 97, right? Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, previous owner definitely took care of this bad boy. Man. So, this, and I uh, think it's been we sprayed not too long ago. There's some looks like the, like real, 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 real fine little chips look like they clear coated it. Sure, sure. But they did a good job. They matched it up real well. It was a yeah. professional job. Oh, yeah. You can always tell, like, if you have the road chips, which all cars eventually have, when it's like the dimples are there where it's been painted over. 
But whoever did this, they paid some good money to get this pay job because this ain't no uh, Rush job or no Mako job. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, they did, the, they did the base plus the clear, so. Now, like, there's a lot of stuff I want to get, like, this mirror is broke. The mechanics of it? Yeah. Okay. I want to get these seats reupholstered, these two front seats. Okay. Okay. Uh, and now that's another thing. I don't want to mess uh, that up. What's a, is there a site where you go through, like, buy parts? Or? Well, yeah, when it comes to these, though, it's hard to find remanufactured ones. So, basically, you're buying used original parts that are just in well good condition, like, good condition. So, like, when I'm buying parts for the 80s SEC, they're used parts. Um, you just have to find people who have a lot of them in storage or people who just they break down these cars and just have a you know a nice inventory of, of parts. Um, Mercedes they do manufacture some of these components, but if you're talking about like original stuff, like original mirrors, stuff like that, you more likely you have to buy them used and just get them sprayed or whatever. But um, I go on eBay a lot for stuff like that. Then there's a couple of German websites where that's all they do is sell parts specifically for these cars. I'll send you some websites. I'll text you some stuff. Because, like, stuff like this, you know, Mercedes doesn't make this anymore. Like, those speaker covers or those mm -hmm. mirror covers right there. So, you have to just buy those used. It's going to be your cheapest route anyways. If you want to keep everything original. Uh, OEM, you know. Nice. Are you going to keep the factory radio? Uh, or is that a factory radio? I'm not sure. The Continental. Um Change it might, They're might be. Yeah, I always keep the bow speakers when I do upgrades, bro, because they're good. Mm -hmm. The ohms are a little lower, in order, or they high? No, they're lower so that you can get the most sound out of a low wattage radio. But all you got, it's okay. You're, with the newer radios, you're able to adjust them and everything to balance that out where you don't blow the speaker. But both speakers sound great. Oh yeah, super nice. So I never change those out. Screens. It's not a double den or a single. It's just like a actual. It's in there and it just comes down. Or yeah, up. yeah, I got you. Like a like the monitor is, is sits out from yeah, yeah the back uh, and it you know, allows tilting and all that. It gives you a real big face. Yeah. Yep, I like that. I like that. Yeah. So I'm gonna do some more research. I see. Oh, I'm sorry. Some of these are spring loaded. Not this. Oh, you had it backwards. Nah, that you got a hole. Oh, okay. I had put it in the one way, and it was kind of tight. Yeah. And then I took it out and then turned it around. <laughs> so I didn't know if you could only put it really supposed to put it in one way. Or... Maybe. I don't know. I know the previous, the, the mid, late 80s, they were one-way keys. You couldn't put, yeah, you could only put it in one way. So I'm not sure. I, uh, I think when I put it in, Mercedes started doing the spring-loaded ignition like where you just turn it and let it go instead of holding it so that's what i did i just let it go real quick but uh this one you gotta hold yeah very nice man like just give it a good detail um the armrest i get that repaired that's original just get it repaired that's that's all easy fixes for real man how's it feel on the highway <laughs> i know it does now with the back sitting low it's still it's not firm or bouncy, is it? No. It's just settled. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So some new springs probably well, fixed that. On that side, I do hear like a little rattle. Okay. So I'm guessing maybe whatever bracket or whatever might, I don't know if it's that or Yeah, a little rattle. Okay. Yeah. Once they get it you get it lifted, they'll see what it is. Yeah. The coil spring design, it could just be out of the strut itself could just the, the gas could been it could be flat now where it's just kind of banging around instead of holding pressure. That's a simple fix too. So I think you got a good deal on this car. Oh yeah, I mean, what I've been seeing and this and that. I mean, you can always, of course, been more and get a whole lot better. I've seen some 20s, yeah. 30s, 40s, you know. Yeah. Because like you said, they're going up in value, man. These are classic cars that are becoming harder and harder to find. Because the ones that were not taken care of that were neglected they ended up in a junkyard but i'm starting to see these even at the mercedes dealership like 
they be having like the windows covered up or like the front end damage or ruined. But people are trying to get these things re rebuilt because I think they're recognizing that they're going up in value. So the V12s are good, the V8s, the sixes are not going to be as worth as worth as much, but they still are going up in value because they're just these are classic cars, man. And, uh, one thing I noticed, I was watching YouTube. Uh huh. This is double pane glass. Yeah, baby. Yeah, that bulletproof stuff, man. Mercedes introduced that too. It's a lot of stuff Mercedes started, man. And, uh, These... Does yours work? Ah, oh, do it again. Do it for the camera. Do it again. Cause you know most of those don't work no more. See, come on, bro. Come on, bro. Yeah. And the seat belt extender, you know, those yeah. start breaking. Mercedes introduced that in the SEC. That was like, whoa. I didn't know they carried it through with this one too, man. Yeah, yeah, trunk, Super dope. Trunk has got that soft load too. See, Mercedes started all that, man. I was out. <laughs> uh, Notice that I was in, in my driveway for like an hour, just opening the car. <laughs> 97 and it still works. Crazy. That's crazy. You got a lot of the the 2000 and plus body style of this and the S class where it don't work no more, you know? Like that's crazy. A 97 and it's still functional. The rear, the seat butt extender, like this, this thing is crazy, man. This is crazy. You got you a good one, bro. I owe, I owe you anything? Nah, you good. I just happy to be able. This right here, this video, being able to do this is, is payment enough, man. We good. Now, if I gotta go in and actually do some work. You know, that's that's a different story. But this right here, just meeting this car was good enough for me. I love I love this car, man. I was excited. This when you see me the pictures, I was excited, looking forward to seeing it because I don't get this opportunity much. Not to see this one. Probably like know how to change all the oils and the fluids and stuff and all that. Yeah. 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 I, mean, I like to, you know, get with you when it's, you know, if I want to get all that done. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely do that because I love to make content with um, just little things. There's a lot of people, a lot of followers oh, yeah. who don't have the information. They're always. So yeah, YouTube. yeah. 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 Um, gold Element Auto Works. Should pop up gold element out of works. Oh, uh, one word, not uh, separate words. Yeah, so this will be on there for sure. Yeah. Appreciate that. Got the rear head rest, gotta pop those up. Yeah, I make a lot of those videos just because uh, they're coming, man. They're coming from out of town. There's not a lot of um, shops that know how to do the coilover conversions. Because that system is so expensive to maintain. The hydraulic fluid suspension Mercedes is making thousands and thousands of dollars every time somebody shows up and says, hey, my stuff is sitting low or I got the red ABC light on and different faults. Because that stuff leaks, man, and it pours out. Those lines rupture. It's a mess. And so people get tired of dumping money into them cars. Like, they want their, they want to drive them because they hard top convertibles and they they beautiful cars like but when the suspension keep dropping and, and, and you you turn up the bottom of the, the bumper because it's scraping in the fenders they like i can't keep this car working so the coilover conversions now you never have to worry about that ever again it's a solid suspension it's good for performance or just everyday driving it's soft you can make it firm if you want to race it like drive it aggressive and they never have to worry about it again. So they, it's, it's really the clientele typically are older gentlemen who they black, white, whatever. They just want to drive their cars, drop the top, have a wife or whomever, and just cruise around. Like, 
where they got all this money through these cars and they can't drive them because the suspension keep going out. So I got uh I changed mine out a long time ago and realized like bro this is like an awesome option. Like wow, I can finally drive this car without driving out of town, the suspension fail, you gotta get it towed home and it's embarrassing. That mother be raising up high for no reason and dropping low for no reason, man. Like it got hydraulics, like it's and it does have hydraulics, but it, it's it's a problem. It always fails because they 20 plus years old. So once I did a coil over suspension, I put it on YouTube, and man, I had a million people asking me questions and this, that, and the other. And I'm like, well, I, I'll do it again if you pay me. So I started coming up with the prices and made a business out of it. Yeah. And so now I got a website, the www.goldelementautoworks.com, where I sell the coilovers now and the products that you need to do the conversion. And people are making appointments and bringing their cars to me for me to do the uh, installation. So they they ship their cars in, transport them in. So that's what you do full time? I do that with the fire department too. So I still do the fire department, but my schedule allows me to, you know, I work a day, I'm off two days. So I got time to do uh, do this. Plus I could take days off and just be off for like uh, a week or two or stuff like that. So those just came in. I'll take some time off and I'm going to knock those out and then get them shit back out. Like... I got some more. I've had them come, bro, from Florida, Canada, Nevada, Georgia, Illinois, Michigan. They come from all over the place, man. It's, it's pretty cool. I think I have some somebody from the Nebraska, New York that's scheduling uh, to come South Carolina, North Carolina. Like, they're just, they can't find anybody out in the area to do it. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's worth it to them because they it's costing so much to maintain. They like bumping. I'll just pay him whatever it costs, the labor, the parts, the shipment. And I got a permanent solution. Like I don't have to keep putting five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 into the suspension. So it just kind of came together. <laughs> you know, it just kind of came together for me. But it's working out well, man, because the videos are helping. Um people call me every day just asking me questions how to do this how to do that how do i buy them can you hook them up for me like it's pretty cool man and so it's just created an opportunity like flipping cars is what got me in the game in the first place yeah. and i just fell in love with mercedes and started working on it myself because i'm cheap like i'm not paying nobody to fix nothing like i fix it myself and i just kind of learned how mercedes builds their cars and their technology and engineering i understand it for some reason and uh i just started falling in love with them like so I know what to buy, what not to buy, which ones, like, like how you are, are understanding the value of these. You understand which cars to buy, which ones are going up in value, the classic joints, and which ones are just kind of like, ah, it's just a Mercedes, it's cool. But the ones that you are supposed to buy and hold on to, that's what I'm into. Yeah. So like if I ever found one of these joints for the right price, I know that you should buy one of these and hold on to it because they're going up in value, you know? Like just like that 600 is going up in value, the V12s. Um, and then they count as 600, it's really rare, you know? Yeah, because like you can't find them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got the V12, like, right here. <laughs> if you find one of those at a good price, but people know what they have for the most part, unless you find somebody that just don't know, then you hit a lick, you know? Um, so that's what I'm, you know, I'm like, I got my own collection. I'm still going to keep doing the business, but certain cars that I've always wanted, I'm always looking out for them, you know? The AMGs and... Yep. You can't get rid of that. Yeah. They're Man, going up. Expensive. Yeah, they're going up in value. That's why I was like, I, I started working on other people's G-Wagons. And I said, okay, I started doing some research. I'm like, I love the G-Wagon. But if I, they was like, the one to buy are the AMGs. You got the five fives, you got the six threes. The thing about the five five is it's a compressor motor. It's a, it's the same V8s that they were using forever. They're super reliable, but they put a supercharger on them and they're hand built. The most reliable AMG motor Mercedes ever built, because like you got the more powerful six threes, like the twin turbos, but they're not as reliable as the superchargers. So that's why everything I have AMG wise will be a five five. I won't buy a six three or none of those because they got other issues that are super expensive to fix, and it's and it's going to happen. Like you, it's inevitable. I don't want no twin turbos. Now, wifey drives this one, so that's the. All, everything Mercedes puts out now is twin turbo, so they can get the most power out of small displacement. But um, and they're fast, like they're crazy fast. But you got issues that come with uh, turbos, like it's inevitable. Audi been de dealing with it forever, 
whenever you introduce a turbo into these cars, you're going to have different types of issues. Mm -hmm. Superchargers are way more reliable. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I know my limitations. I ain't rich. So I know that I can maintain these joints, you know? Like, I ain't touching nothing that I can't fix. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, wife, you always wanted one of these. So I was like, all right. It's already cost me a lot of money. And I was like, that's why I won't. This would be the only one over here that's a twin turbo. <laughs> I only did it for her, bro. The, for me, I like the older joints that are easy to fix. But uh, this is, you know, you get new. When, when you get all the new technology, it's, it's super crazy. Like, it's fast. It's whatever. But you go to, you got to have that exactly. that wallet right. open and ready because <laughs> <laughs> everything is expensive to fix on this car, bro. That's just love, love for wife. That's the reason why I did it. Otherwise, I'm old school, baby. I like I like this, man. I like this. So, but you know, it's I, I, it don't matter what Mercedes you got. It's a Mercedes. But when you get something nice, man, that's unique. When the last time you seen one of these on the road? Uh, around here, it's, it's been a long time. Anywhere you go, they're going to be like... <laughs> <laughs> you see that? You see that? Like, you just feel different when you're in this kind of car, man. I was really wanting a black one. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, maybe hold on to it uh, maybe next year. Trade it in on the black one. Well, once you... Yeah. Nice. Once you know what you have, yeah. it's like anything else. If you never had it before, you're just excited to get it. Once you start to understand it, you start noticing the subtle differences, the like the years what they introduce into it, or what you love about it, what you might not like about it, whatever, you'll be more keen when you see what you're looking for. Like, okay, it has to have this, this, and I see it, and that's the right price. You know what this is, and you might be like, you might keep it, or you might get top dollar out of it as long as you maintain it because the way this sit right here you'll get top dollar out of it it fix the little things that you see might need to be wrong uh yeah. might need to be fixed cosmetically inside you might see that lick man on that black joint and be like that's it i got the one that i because i did the same thing with these like i've had three of these before i got to the black sl55 i my silver one i sold to my dude here uh cory with the uh bentley um rims you know panoramic roof silver it's beautiful amg um but i always wanted a black one this one came out of florida this this old white man uh in orlando florida real nice guy we became real good great friends we we talk all the time we text all the time um he was going to have me fix the suspension but then he was like hey how much would you just buy it from me for if i don't put the money into the suspension you buy it as is i give you a good deal on it it only had, I think, 78,000 miles on it, or 68, I think 78,000 miles on it. Pampered, he took great great care of it. It just needed the suspension work. So I saw it as an opportunity, like it was a lick. I had a silver one that I had already bought that was an AMG that was cool, but I always wanted a black one. So I had a silver one for about seven months and then this one came up and boom. So you don't, you don't ever know Sometimes you might be satisfied with this and you might be like, I'll never get rid of it. Or you hold on to it till you find that color that you really want. Or maybe you want a 99. I don't know. Like, you'll see as you own this one, be like, ah, oh, okay, the difference is like, okay. So, you know, but this right here, shit, it's a great way to start. If you don't do nothing else, you got one. <laughs> it, it is beautiful, bro. It's beautiful, so... Just figure out the little things, the little issues. The check engine light, let me know if it comes back on when driving. Because I don't see it on right now. I cleared it. Um, but just see if it pops back up. Maybe the gas tank issue. It could be just that that, that gas cap. Because um, you got it from a, a, a dealership, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you weren't able to ask the owner, the previous owner, anything about it. You could do your research, your due diligence, and be like, uh, if you have any information on a previous owner, I doubt if she got a Facebook account. Yeah, make sure the paint job was just to keep it top notch. I don't see any damage. I don't see anything that looks like it's been replaced. Exactly, yeah. So it looked like it was probably just to refresh it, you know? And it's been kept in the garage. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Shut. Yep. For sure. For sure. For sure. Okay. Well, I hold you up. Yeah, my hands is freezing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, good yeah. meeting yeah. you again. Yeah. Seeing you again, yeah. bro. It's been a minute, man. So we definitely need to hook up. I'll text you um, the links that I have or the websites for for parts. You know what I'm saying? And uh, if I come across some uh, information, I'm going to do some research today. I'll text you what I'm coming across. And uh, just keep it in the back of your mind. Like, okay, some things you might want to consider or some potential issues or whatever. Just... Yeah, that's what I was trying to, you know, like, with the mileage on it. You know, I mean, I'm pretty sure you know when stuff starts going out. Yeah. That's you know, so something to look for. And, yep. You know, I'll check out that rear suspension as well. See what's involved with refreshing that, getting that lifted back up. But you got you one, bro. Before you put wheels on it, make sure you get that suspension taken oh, yeah. care of. Yeah, that's definitely first. Yeah, you know, the hood, bro, they'll buy a Caprice. That mud be raggedy, but it has some rims <laughs> on it. Don't do that to this. <laughs> yeah, man. Those ones you sent me were super nice. That YouTube video, I saw that. You can go with BBS. You can go with the, like you said, the Hammer style, the AMG style. Just, yeah, bro. You already know. Okay, man. Oh, yeah. Stay in touch, bro. All right, I'll hit you up soon. Beautiful. Beautiful boy. Woo! God, that's a beautiful car.